Welcome back to Fruno Connections. On the last episode, we started our chart plotter shootout with plotting routes on all four systems. Today, we're looking at waypoints. On each of the systems, we'll show you how to drop a waypoint, how to edit it, how to save it, move it, and delete it. We're also going to introduce you to the brand new catch feature in TZ Touch 3, which allows you to mark a waypoint as a fish species, along with the length and the weight of fish that you caught. Finally, we're going to take a look at entering waypoints by position entry, which means by lat lawn or TDs. So buckle up and let's get going. The new Fruno TZT3 has made it so simple to drop a waypoint in your current position. Let me show you how it's done. Now, if I like to mark a spot on there, I can just tap on the screen hit new waypoint, and there it is. Alrighty, I just caught a fish, and I wanna save the spot where I'm at. I'm gonna hit that events marker, hit the fish button, and then it's saved. Or we just hooked up on a fish, and I wanna save this spot. I hit the events, that's gonna save the spot right where I'm at. Now I can hit this hook for new, I can click on the species that I wanna label it as. Say we just caught a grouper. I'm going to hit grouper. Grouper comes up. We can hit the length that it is. Say it's 30 inches. It weighed 25 pounds. Now it just saved that spot right there where I'm at and it'll be a grouper icon. So next time I know looking. If I want a grouper, that's where I'm going to go. All right, once I've set my mark, there's the grouper. It comes up, grouper, the weight, the length. I can even set a picture in the new TZ First Mate app. So now that we talked about how to navigate using a route, let's talk about something a little more simple, and that's waypoints. And just so you guys know, a route is nothing but a bunch of waypoints connected together. But let's go for the simple route and add a waypoint. So on system A, it's a nice, easy thing to do. Say, for instance, we want to go somewhere offshore. We have a specific area we want to go to. We can tap anywhere on the screen and tap on waypoint. Let's make a waypoint on system B. So if you touch and hold on the screen, it will give you the option to create a new waypoint the new waypoint and then here we can name it so give it a good test name we can edit it by latitude and longitude we don't necessarily need to here we can do that or as Manny showed us earlier we can move a waypoint so we can save it and it created that new waypoint up here on system C if I want to enter a waypoint, what I would do is I go to our chart screen, if I want to, I can touch and hold on the screen, and I can say place a waypoint. And from here I could change my symbol, my group, and um, you know I can then come into other options here and add some comments to it or rename right. it if I want to. So we just caught a grouper. I saved my spot. Now I'd like to name it. I'm going to click on the icon and it's time to name it. I'm going to hit edit, name. Now once you've named your spot and you get to this screen, what's nice about the Furuno, this screen gives you ample time to input more information. I would like to put a comment in there on what I caught the grouper on. So now we have our spot, we have the name, what I caught the fish on, how big the fish was, and the length of the fish, and of course the species. If I like to go to that spot, just hit go to and X out, and it's going to take me right there to it. Moving a waypoint on the new Furuno TZT3 
is as simple as it gets. Click on the icon, touch move, and simply drag it to right where you want it, and then hit end move. Now once you have your waypoint saved and you want to change what it looks like, just go to edit, color, or symbol. I can simply change the colors and you'll see it change there. And then if I want to change the symbol, edit, I'm going to go to symbol and then I can mark it to whatever I like, whatever it may be, a good spot to anchor. Now we've changed the color and the symbol and as simple as that. Now what I like to do is actually name the spot. Click on the icon, hit edit, I'm going to name it. Now if you ever want to delete a waypoint, it's as simple as this. Tap on the icon, hit delete, and it's gone. Now have you ever hit that delete button when you have the oh crap factor? Let me tell you what, you can undo it several times so you can make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And the Fruno TZT3 will back you up. Or you can even redo it by pushing this and bring you back to what you originally had. Now we just, the machine names this waypoint 0086. We can change that at any time. In the upper left hand corner, we see waypoint 0086. From here, we can edit it. We can change its name. We can change the symbol. Lots of symbols to choose from. So, you know, if it's a, that's interesting, it's got a phone. Different fishing areas, different symbols, different flags. If it's an area you go diving in, you can drop a dog flag. And we can use current position or we can enter range and bearing. There's just so many things we can change. And it seems to me, Matt, that uh, yeah, changing I, a waypoint on here is really yeah, an easy I thing mean, to do. You know, in any situation, you know, the more that you can customize, um, you know, the information that you have, whether it's, like you said, uh, a fishing, uh, a good restaurant, a good marina to dock at or to get fuel, right. um, you know, it gives you a visual indication, you know, if you want to change your symbol, change the name, add a comment to it. Right. It makes it just much easier for the end user to understand um, where he or she is going to. Right. And the other cool thing is I'm looking at the screen here, um, things you don't usually see is on system A, we can add a depth, we can add water, water temperature, and we can add, add a comment. comment yeah. And we simply do that by clicking on the box. So, mm -hmm. we're, you know, um, we do not have a transducer hooked to system A right now, but if we did, we know the exact depth. So say for instance, we want to just type in 0, 0, 25 feet, and we'll just click done. And now that's part of our uh, profile for this specific waypoint. And that really is, that's a nice feature. I yeah, do like that. Yeah, I agree. When the waypoint screen is active, you have the choice to edit a waypoint, edit a symbol, delete a waypoint, and move a waypoint. So now what we can do is we can edit that waypoint if we want to change the icon type color. Yeah, just what I do so I know where's where I've gotten the bite, where my uh, trap is for the live bait, or for where I seen fish in the past or where I want to keep where I want to check out a new spot I use different icons so it's nice having a great list of icons to use so you can separate and know and go there faster okay excellent now do you color code them as well for you know certain categories like bait and fishing spots yes, and racks 100 percent so yes perfect okay that's that's way helpful so if we touch we can do that if you touch and hold on the waypoint there you go. So you go there. Now, I think we can change the icon by going there. So we can pick, we have a list of different icons here on the screen. I don't think you can scroll. So we'll put a fish point down and then we can pick what color we want. All right. And then if you hit save, that'll save it. And it's switched the icon now on the screen to the yellow fish that he selected earlier. Yeah, so let's touch on the waypoint. Let's add in a note about that waypoint. Sometimes you can put in notes and comments about, you know, what you saw, you know, good grouper spot, you know, whatever it is. So we should be able to add in a note here. 
Let's say okay. I get a lot of bites there in the winter time, so I can add a note to it yes. and say a winter bite. When the waypoint screen is active, you have the choice to edit the symbol, edit the color, delete the waypoint, go to the waypoint, and save the waypoint. So looking at the screen here on System C, we have a couple different ways that we can navigate to a waypoint. The first way we're going to show you is through our waypoint list. We're going to go to my data here, click on our waypoints. From here, we could search what waypoints we want, if we know the name of the waypoint we're looking for, or we could simply bring up the group that we know it's in, and let's say we wanted to navigate to waypoint 9. We're going to touch on waypoint 9. Now we have to go to view waypoint details. When you bring up this waypoint page, you can edit the name, symbol, group, add a comment, delete it, or go to the waypoint. Now let's say I know where my waypoint is on my chart. What I can do is I can touch and hold on my waypoint. And what we want to do is we want to go to more options. When you go to more options, you will find that you can delete, edit, and move the waypoint. So Eric, how easy is it now to input a number into this new TZT3? That's a great question, Cap. You know, we get a lot of requests for that. I know it's one of the most common things. You're, you're, on, you're on the VHF or you're on your cell phone. People are giving you a number and you want to input that number and go to it as fast as possible. So. It's in the edge swipe. We put it right in the edge swipe on the right side, which is our navigation selections. And you just edge swipe to the right, position entry, put in the numbers. Create so a easy. new point. Yeah, and then we even added this go to right here. So boom, you hit the go to button and you're, off, you're on your way to it. So Eric, my dad has a book of TDs. Is there any way I can put them in the new TZT3? It's just the same way that position entry mode, we just go in and change the units. It's super simple. So Show me. Sure. I edge swipe out, go to position entry, and you see this units tab. I drop that down, select Loran C, and I can enter the TD numbers just that fast. It's so super simple. It's almost exactly the same way as the position entry in lat long. Tell you what, I'm going to be dusting off my dad's old book. Maybe some of the spots are there. Maybe they're not, but you know what? Mm. It's worth a shot. I'm willing to give it a try. So Eric, I see units. What other ways can we change this? Sure, Cap. You know, we have a lot of different customers using the machine a lot of different ways. You can set the resolution of the waypoint that you want to enter. With all these different formats here, what, for example, what does all these M's mean? All right, so the D's are, de are degrees, the M, the big M's, or capital M's, are minutes, and then these are decimal minutes, and we go all the way down. The, sh the, the smallest number is represents six inches, and it all goes by sixes, and, and, and so if you go six inches, six feet for the next one, 60 feet, and 600 feet are all those M's. So that's just the resolution of the point you want to enter. So if you drop a penny, you can go back and find that penny if you put that in at the, at the highest number. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Got it dialed in. Now, yeah. let me see. What is this right here? MGRS. Okay, that's a great question. That's the military grid reference system. You know, in our guys, we, hit, we sell these all over the world. Sometimes we put them on the rib boats that the military uses, and they use the military grid reference system all over the world. Awesome. And Lawrence. we know what Loran C is. Yeah. Yeah. This is what the Loran C will look like. Yeah. That's the old time. TDs, yeah. TDs. And then explain this to me. What is this? So for the scientific guys, they don't like to use uh, dec uh, degrees and minutes. They use degrees and decimal degrees. So it just counts those out in decimal format. It's no big deal. It's just the way they like to represent their points. So looking at this, Pretty much anybody can use this from your everyday user to your government. That's right. We can also edit its position. This is kind of an interesting feature for a waypoint. Say for instance, your buddy calls you and gives you, he's out there fishing at specific coordinates. 
we can actually edit this waypoint and drop in coordinates of where your buddy's sitting and we can save that information as the waypoint we want to go to. So that's a really nice feature to have. I do kind of like that. Now we're going to talk a little bit about entering in TDs. Now, from what I've read... What, what's a TD? A TD stands for time difference. Okay. So they were, the Loran system was a uh, the system of uh, land-based stations that would measure the distance, the difference in time between station to station. And that's how you could plot out your points. It's a system that's not really used anymore. They haven't really, they haven't done that in years. But there are a lot of the old timers, especially in the New England area, that use TDs a lot. And so they'll have 40, 50 years worth of their waypoints written in TDs that they want to be able to convert or still use. So to set it up, we have to go into the menu. We're going to go into the, the main settings menu. And we're going to go under navigation. And we're going to come down here to the Loran settings. So we have to turn it on. And then we can go in and we can set in our station. So for right now, we're going to go down here and see if we can... Southeast. Southeast USA. Okay, so let's set Southeast. And let's pick those two stations because they'll be preferred. We'll do it as a test. So then if we exit out of this menu... Okay. Alright, so as you can see down here in the corner with our cursor data box, it gives us the latitude and longitude where we are, where the cursor is right now. But it also gives us the TD numbers for where the cursor is. And it gives us our station name, which is 7980. So it's giving us some TD information. If we go in here and we try to create a waypoint on this location, so we should be able to. We're going to edit this. And OK, so if we edit a waypoint, it will let us enter our latitude and longitude, but it will also allow us to enter in a TD number. System C gives me the ability to enter in those TDs, and the way we're going to do that is we go to My Data, and we go to Waypoints, and we're going to go to New Waypoint. And then when we click on New Waypoint here, we're going to go into Position. And once we're into position, we can now find where it says Loran TDs. Now we can enter in our TD number here and navigate to that point. So Eric, on the new TZT3, I heard you guys have a, a four digit pin code now. That's right, yeah, we have a pin code lock so that all your data is totally safe. You don't have to worry about it. Somebody gets on your boat, turns the machine on, they're gonna see that pin code lock, it's gonna stop them dead in their tracks. They're not gonna be able to grab your data. And you know, it, it's just a way to save what's really important for you. Can you show me how it's done? Yeah, sure. We go into the home menu, click on settings, and then click on general you'll see password lock is off right now. All we have to do is turn it on and enter our code. Be sure it basically comes up with a, uh, with a warning saying, hey, if you forget your passcode lock, the data could be gone. But the cool thing about TZ Touch 3 is we have that new cloud, that, that new cloud feature. So if you save your data to the cloud, even if you lose or forget your password or some catastrophic happens, all your data is still safe in the cloud. You can reload it right into the machine. So with that being said, if someone were to, God forbid, steal the unit or try to enter it, there's no way they're going to get my personal information in all the spots I've worked so hard for. That's right. Your data is safe. That's awesome. Aren't you guys the first ones to come out with this? Yeah, I've been told. Yeah, I don't think anybody else has it. We're the first. TZ Touch 3 is the first product to actually have the pin code lock feature to save your data. And uh, a lot of people are really excited about it. I know down here in the Keys or anywhere you go, fishermen, their points, that's their livelihood, a lot of them. And they, 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 they value that data. It's super important. And we're, we can actually save it for them now. We don't have, you don't have to worry about it. You can have peace of mind when you leave the boat that nobody's gonna be able to jump on the boat and steal your points. After Eric showed Jack the pin code lock, he couldn't wait to pull a little prank on the other captains. So Mike, I was thinking, you know, we've been on your boat, we've been talking about waypoint transfers. Yep. You've been working for Jack for a long time. I wonder how many good waypoints he has on his units. I'm gonna tell you this, I've been trying to steal these numbers for years, but the one thing I'm worried about, you get shot for something like that. <laughs> well, let's hop on board and take a look. 
Oh man, wouldn't you know Jack has the new TZT3 feature of the pin code lock? Oh, he's got the pin code lock. I guess there's no marks for us today, Mikey. Nope. Hey, 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 wait, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Get out of there. My spots are finally saved. Thank you for Runo. Dropping a waypoint should be quick and easy. We're talking two steps. It should be tap the screen where you want the waypoint and then tap on add waypoint. TC Touch 3 and System A both use this method, but System B required at least four steps and System C required at least three steps. All of the systems allowed you to change the characteristics of the waypoints. You could add colors and symbols, you could change the name and add a comment to them, but only TC Touch 3 allowed you to save a waypoint as a catch. You could add the fish species, the length, and even the weight of a fish that you caught. You could also take a photo with the TZ First Mate app and apply that to the waypoint. Also, TZ Touch 3 is the first system to allow a pin code lock to protect all those valuable waypoints. On part three of our chart plotter shootout, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the systems and show you how to do some similar features within each of the MFDs. We're also going to take a look at weather and charts and some other options. So make sure you join us on the next episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the bell below to get notifications for the next time we release new videos. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.